Guys, today we have this 2009 Audi Q5. We're going to be changing the factory display to our 10.25 inch Android display. Uh, as I said, this is 2009. This system will work on all Q5 models up until the facelift in about 2017. Now we have done a few of these in the past that are all MMI cars. We've added CarPlay to the factory screen. We've replaced the factory screen with our display like we're doing in this car. However, this car is a non-MMI car. So the concert radio or symphony radio cars. Uh, we'll go more into that later on, but for now, let's go look at the kit. Okay, in the kit, this is what you will receive. We have the new fascia panel. Okay, so that's gonna replace the factory fascia panel with a new hazard button as well. All of the wiring, so we're gonna go through all of this and show you how to install it. Bracket, so that's gonna mount the new screen. And then of course, the display itself. And so that's pretty much everything that you need. The kit comes with everything you need, so you don't have to worry about having to get extra parts. We are going to go through the install right now. Okay, first thing we want to do is remove glove box, the radio itself, and the screen. So we'll start with the glove box. This panel here just pops right off. Just like so. And basically you're going to have one 8mm here, two underneath, and three at the top. That's going to remove the whole glove box. In some cases, you need to remove this little case here. And to do that, you're not gonna see it on camera, but right in the corner, here and here, there's little tabs. So you'll need a pick tool to bring the tabs in, and then the whole thing slides out. And sometimes there's a screw up there hidden underneath. And to be honest, if you put it back together, you can leave that screw out to make it easier for the next time, because that's just annoying, that one. Second thing, sometimes, the glove box is going to have a little thing right here, so come through and I'll show you. So on the inside of the glove box right here, there's nothing obviously, but sometimes you're going to have a little connector. Okay, now that's called AMI, which stands for Audi Music Interface. That is very important and we will come back to that later, okay, because that's going to have something to do with the sound quality coming through the car. This car doesn't have AMI, so we're going to forget that, but for people that do have it, I'll explain later. Look at that. Don't even have to look anymore. Next step, screen. Okay, so this one here, we're gonna remove the original fascia panel. Same thing, just get underneath, pop her out. You might be able to use your hands, there we go. Boom. Unplug this. Uh, retain the four clips, because we're gonna put them on the new fascia, so all you have to do is just pull them off, slide them onto the new one. Screen itself is held in by four Torx 20 bolts. We're just gonna pop those out. And then we're gonna remove the screen. Now the plug on the screen, this one right here, is very important that we retain it, okay? So I get a lot of emails, people saying that when they go to car, they've just got black screen. They're forgetting to plug that in, okay? So that has to get plugged into a uh, part on the harness. I'll show you that later. Next up is the radio. To remove the radio, we need to pop the vents out and the climate control out. Very easy. Plastic panel removal tool. One. Okay, just be careful around the vents. There we go. We just pop her out. There's a plug on it, so remove the plug. There we go. Set that away. Same as the air vent. One. Two. Just pop it right out. Once we've got those two out, there's gonna be four eight millimeter nuts, bolts. We're just gonna pop them out. And then you can remove the radio. Okay, so we can pop that out. And then you can pop the gear selector back into place and take the key out after this. All right, done. Okay, now that we have the disassembly side of things complete, we can start fitting our new kit. This antenna here is the Wi-Fi antenna for wireless CarPlay. What we're gonna do with that is we're gonna mount it, we used to mount it up behind here, but I think it gets a little bit of interference from the electronics in the vehicle. So, we're gonna put it behind this panel and under there like that, and it's got double-sided on it, so you can stick it to the carpet or to the panel, doesn't matter. Um, and then you're gonna run the cable up behind the radio and then up to the screen. There's plenty of space, it's very easy to do. So if I get my hand right behind here, I can feel it through the glove box. So cable comes up behind, under behind this panel to the screen, it's very easy. Wiring harness, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. USB inputs and 
GPS antenna. Now GPS antenna is going to go behind the A pillar. Gets much better reception there. We used to put it behind here. The reception still works, it's not as good. I highly recommend putting it here. So we'll get that done as well. To remove the A pillar, very easy. You can use either a pick tool or a plastic panel removal tool and you just wanna pop it out. Now there's two versions. There's one version that'll pop out and there'll be a screw behind it. And there's this version here, which is just a clip. There we go. That'll come out and up. GPS antenna will sit right here. And then we'll run that over to the screen. Two options with the USBs. Plugs into the screen here. You can run it down and leave it in the glove box. Or you can run one into the center console, which is what we're going to do. And I can show you that later. So in the MMI cars, there's a little can junction plug right here, sort of in the dash there. For non-MMI, so Concert and Symphony, you don't need to worry about that plug, leave it connected. This plug here will instead go behind, underneath, here, all right? So that'll plug into the climate control. And the original climate control plug will plug into this, just like that, okay? So we'll tape that up get that put back behind the dash and that's good to go then that's going to leave you with this harness here so same thing as we spoke about earlier behind the dash up here you can pull it straight through just be careful when you're pulling it that you don't snag any of the plugs and then we'll tape this up and run it up behind the screen now for the sound you can see there's a spare port here and we have a quad lock so the, what is it? I think it's the green one, or the blue, I can't remember now. One of these plugs here is the AUX input to the car. So it's gonna be hardwired into this new screen system. But if the car has AMI, this car didn't. If you do have AMI, this will come in the kit. It plugs into the AMI and gives you an AUX out. And that AUX needs to plug into this plug right here. So that's how it will look. That'll plug in and go straight to the AMI because this is the AUX out into the AMI. What happens if you leave it hardwired is that it can create interference and the sound quality isn't that good. Okay, so if you ever read online that the sound is bad on these systems and all that sort of crap, it's not, it's actually really good. It's just that people don't know how to fit them properly. So in this car, no AMI, we don't have to worry about this. AUX is gonna sound fine. If you do have AMI, we highly recommend doing that way and plugging it in. Otherwise, it, there's 50-50 chance. It might sound fine, or it might have that interference. So we've now run our main harness up to the screen. It just runs behind the glove box. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Just put my hand in there. So you can just run it right up here. It's very, very easy to do. The part that a lot of people forget right here is all you need to do is plug that into there. Okay, put some tape around it, make it nice. If you're going to add an aftermarket camera, this is where we do it. RCA goes into the camera input. There's 12 volt out and there's back. Now, if you've got a test light or a multimeter, just check. One of these will get 12 volts on reverse. That's the one that needs to connect to camera power. People buy the camera up and they just connect it to the reverse light in the car. Do not do that, it will not work. This car has, all these Audis have pulse width modulation on the lights. The camera will work for about 10 seconds and then start flashing um, because of the power source. It needs to be connected to power from here or accessories or something from the fuse box. Okay, USBs. So we're gonna run them into the glove box area. Same thing, we're just gonna run that up to the screen. Get your hand in there, pull it through. Okay, that's gonna plug into the display. Um, and then you've got two options, like I said, just run them into the glove box or do one in the glove box. You'll have to extend one, extend it into the center console. That's what we're gonna do. Once that stuff is all installed, you can start putting the factory radio back in. So we're gonna use our new quad lock connector, pop it straight in, factory antenna in, and the factory screen cable, don't forget that either. Okay, fit that back into its place. Now don't force it in, just, okay, so that fit perfectly. If you try and push it in and it's getting stuck, you know, three quarters of the way, quarter of the way, pull it out, move your cables around, fish the cables wherever they need to go. Do not force it, you'll break something. Okay, air vent. And then that's just gonna pop straight back into place. 
XXO, turn it off. And lastly, the vent, don't forget the cable. Okay, it runs, there's a little channel for it up here. Just pull it through, and there you go. Okay, now before you put that in, you gotta take the key out. Just make sure it doesn't get crimped as well. There we go. Slide right into place. Look at that, like I bought one. Uh, okay, so before we go too far, we'll do some testing. So I'm gonna just grab the screen, plug it in, see how it operates. Okay, so we've got the Audi logo. Very nice, very cool. Okay, so then it's gonna boot up. So we're gonna go to car. And we wanna make sure that you can see the factory screen. So that means you don't lose any of the factory features. Everything works. You can see it's picking up vehicle data, which is good. And they're correct, perfect. We're gonna go media, source, okay. AUX, that's what we want. Then we need to touch the screen, go back to music, play some sound. Perfect, exactly what we want, okay. So we know sound works. Uh, it obviously works with the vehicle, so we wanna turn the car off. Okay, screen turns off, perfect. If you have a factory camera, you can go ahead and test that camera, make sure it works. Um, if it doesn't, there's a setting in here to change the setting to factory camera. I'll show you how to do that later. But that is pretty much everything. So now we can continue putting the car back together. If you're gonna add an aftermarket camera, RCA into here and power to the blue wire that says 12V. That gets 12 volt power when the car is in reverse. Okay, I just had to double check that. The rest of them you can tape up, or if you're not adding a camera, you can tape it all up. So we're putting in the new bracket now, which just utilizes the factory screen mounting points. What you need to do is remember which one your 4G and GPS is. So this is the 4G or Wi-Fi antenna. And if you look on the back of the screen, you'll see we have the big plug, and next to the big plug, it says 4G. So that means obviously big plug, 4G, little plug, GPS. Okay, you can't get them mixed around, otherwise things won't work properly. Then you're gonna use the factory mounting hardware. So there's Torx 20 volts, and we're just gonna mount this cage. Now this plug here, keep it handy, because it's gonna plug into the new fascia. So if you go here, you can see the plug. Plug it in, boom. Has its work, okay? Perfect. Once that's on, one, two, three, four. The kit comes with four small screws. Just screw the fascia to the mounting bracket and then we can look at putting the screen on. Okay, so we've got our 4G and GPS antennas on and we've got the two plugs plugged into the screen. So now it's just gonna go back and then down. Just like that. And it clicks on. There's two tabs behind the screen that you just have to flick open and then screw the screen down with the supplied hardware. And there she is, that is on. So what we're gonna do now is put the car back together. Everything's just gonna go back on in the reverse way that you took it off. So pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we can look at the screen and we'll do some testing. All right guys, there it is. That is the job complete. We have the screen in, everything is working. So we've got touch working. Now with the MMI cars, you can use the dial. With this car, you cannot. However, if you go to car info, it'll show you your factory uh, screen and you can still control everything with that dial. So if we go to radio, you can still use that. But when you go to the new screen, it's gonna be all touch. Here you've got applications. So you've got Google Chrome, YouTube, Gmail, uh, Play Store if you wanna download any other apps. There's mapping there. You can see the camera easily by pressing the AVM or going into reverse. Z-Link is CarPlay, so we've already got our phone connected. So you can see we've got Apple CarPlay. It works with Android Auto as well. Um, we can go home and get out of that. If you want to quickly get to CarPlay, you can just go over to Z-Link right there. That brings you right into CarPlay. Dashboard's pretty cool, so it shows you current driving information. So if we rev the engine, you can see uh, that it runs there and also speedometer works. Doors as well. Bluetooth, so to use wireless CarPlay, you're gonna go ahead and connect your Bluetooth. Uh, music and video, so it has a hard drive, or if you've got an external hard drive, you can plug it into the USB and use it. 
uh, Navi. It's got a whole bunch of features, guys. These things are loaded with features. We already have a video on the channel about, it's a full review to show you how these things work. But basically, that's the installation in a non-MMI car. This is a Symphony. Also, the same for a concert radio. Steering wheel controls work as well, if I didn't say that already. And that's pretty much it. If you have a factory camera, it will still work, or you can add one like we did. Um, I think that's it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to pick this screen up, head to www.shoptfb.com. Uh, use TFB10, we'll give you a 10% discount. And that is pretty much it. We'll catch you in the next one.